Now I know people have done reviews on film cameras a lot and reviews on this specific camera, but I was looking for reviews. I found a couple. I thought that I might be able to add something to these reviews, talking about the good, the bad, and showing a lot of photo samples of this, which is what I usually do with review videos of cameras. I wanna see how well the camera actually shoots. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. We're gonna talk about the Canon QL17 G3. G3. So this is a 35 millimeter fixed lens camera that has a 40 millimeter 1.7 aperture lens on it. This is the third generation of the Canonet series, which is where the G3 comes from. And the QL in the name stands for quick loading, which basically is what the camera does. When you load film into this camera, you just pull the leader over to the line and close it. That's it, it's super quick, it's super easy. I never had any issues loading this at all for like all eight rolls I shot through it. This is a rangefinder camera, which basically means that the, the, the little part that you look through right there is not actually connected to the lens. So what you see in this little, this little viewfinder right here is not going to be exactly 100% matching what your photo is. There's some pros and cons to that, which I'll get into later. So that's a pretty brief overview of this camera. Now let's get into some sample images that I shot with this. So now you've seen a lot of sample images, so you know that this lens is super sharp and this camera is really not a bad camera at all. I picked this thing up for 50 bucks because it's got a broken light meter in it, which is what I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But let me first give you the bad of this camera. There's only like two things that are, could be possibly considered bad and they don't really affect me personally. So the first is the fact that it is a rangefinder. So like I mentioned earlier, a rangefinder viewfinder is not actually connected to the lens, it's a separate entity basically. So when you look through here, you get a little box of what you see and then you can see outside this box. So I'll kind of, I'll put an example of that up on the screen right here. So without getting too technical, this is basically what you see when you look through the viewfinder of a rangefinder versus an SLR. Now with the rangefinder, you're going to have two little squares, right? So you have the full square that shows the entirety of what you can see through the viewfinder. And then you've got a square in the middle of that, which is going to show you what's actually going to be in frame. So with rangefinders, you'll see more than just the frame of what you're shooting. So you can see outside of the frame, which is what the gray area in this photo would be, as well as the inside of your frame, which is what the brightened area of this photo would be. Now this isn't actually what it looks like. You usually just have like yellow square lines around what your actual frame will be. Whereas an SLR, would show you only what you're going to be seeing in the photo. So an SLR would look just like this, and you would not be able to see outside of that frame unless you move the camera to see outside the frame. So that's the basic concept of rangefinder versus SLR as far as what you see in the actual viewfinder itself. So as you can see, your frame will be what's inside the box and what's outside the box you can still see, but it won't be part of your frame. Also, it's kind of off a little bit because as you can see, the lens is right here, but the viewfinder is right here. So there's like a minimal difference in distance. It's kind of negligible, but if you're trying to be exact on a photo, you may be off slightly. So you have to compensate for that when you're shooting. I guess on this camera, there might be like two more things that could potentially be a con for some people. It doesn't affect me personally because uh, my light meter doesn't work, which is why I got this camera so inexpensive. And I actually wouldn't use this light meter anyways, because it only works on aperture priority mode. Okay, just gotta point out one quick thing. I say aperture priority like 10 times in the rest of this video. This camera does not have aperture priority. It's shutter priority, which is exactly what I describe in the video, but I said aperture priority because the A on the lens kind of threw me off. Uh, either way, this camera has shutter priority, not aperture priority, so apologies for that. So on the aperture priority mode, you would pick your shutter speed and it would pick the appropriate aperture based on the lighting situation for you. I don't like that. I, I wanna pick all my settings personally, so that doesn't affect me, but if you do wanna use aperture priority mode, uh, the ISO only goes up to 800. So if you wanted to push your film out past that, you would not be able to do so with aperture priority mode because it's going to dictate your light based on the ISO limit that you've put in here and the light that's coming into the camera. And you know, with the light meter only working in aperture priority mode, if you don't shoot in aperture priority mode, like I don't, then uh, you don't have a light meter in this camera to use unless you're using like an external app, which is what I use. And I also use a Sunny 16 roll, so it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, but you might wanna keep that in mind. You don't have a light meter with this camera unless you do that. Uh, mine also doesn't work, so 
oh well. Now let's get into the good things about this camera, the stuff that I really enjoy about this camera, and there's quite a few more than the cons I just presented. First and foremost, this is a super sharp lens. I was really surprised with the quality of this lens at all apertures, you know? From 1.7 all the way to f16, this thing performs way better than some of my other cameras like my Nikon f3, which is a lot more expensive than this camera, even though they're both not really that expensive. Uh, but this is definitely the sharpest lens that I have in any film camera period right now. Speaking of the lens, I actually really enjoy the 40 millimeter focal length. I do like 50 millimeter, which is what I usually shoot on, but 40, it's just slightly wider. And I, ki I kind of like that, I kind of like that. It's not wide enough to be distorting everything, but it's wide enough to get a little bit more in, in focus. Um, I do like that the lens also goes down to 1.7. Um, I don't know, it's a low aperture. So if I'm shooting indoors or if I'm shooting outdoors and it's dark, going down to 1.7 for portraits or whatever shoot I want to do, that's pretty convenient. I, I like the fact that it can go down that low. Focusing on this camera, um, I really enjoy focusing on this camera. This has got like the traditional rangefinder focus, so it's got the little patch in the middle and you just kind of line up the two images to make sure they're correct, and that's all you have to do. Uh, this focus is actually, I'm gonna zoom in really quick because this focus is actually quite interesting. Let's see here. So the focus lever on this camera is right here. It's really, really short. This is infinity and this is minimum like very short focus distance. But I actually have not found too much of an issue like getting the correct focus and I haven't found any of my photos that were out of focus due to this being such a short like throw between minimum and maximum. Um, I feel like it's, kind of, I don't know, it's kind of nice. I kind of like being able to focus like this instead of, you know, turning it. I don't know, this is, this kind of feels, it feels not too bad. The shutter is entirely silent. I mean, almost silent to the point that like, if I'm talking and I click it, or if I'm outside, or, I mean, even if somebody's like listening hard, they'll be able to hear it, but it doesn't sound like a shutter. And I really like that, especially for street photos, or if I'm just taking photos with friends and I don't want them to react to me taking a photo of them. Here's an example of that. I actually do have film in here. I probably should have taken it out for this video, but oh well, I'm just gonna shoot. Okay, here's the sound of the shutter. One, two, and that's it. That was the shutter. Silent, one more time. All right, I'm gonna waste one more frame for you. One, two, that's it. Super quiet, really enjoy it. Another pro about this camera is how small it is. Let me just let me just show you how small this camera is compared to another camera. So this is a Canon AE-1 program, which I'll review later on, uh, but this is like the stereotypical size of like a small 35 millimeter manual film camera. And here is the Canonette, the QL17 G3. Significantly smaller. Let's compare that to another camera, actually. This is the Yashica TL Electro X, which is something I just picked up not too long ago and already broke, so I'll have to try to fix that. But this is a larger uh, SLR style, like, film camera. And here is the Canonette next to it. So as you can see, this is a pretty small camera compared to a lot of other film cameras. Um, I really like that small size. It's small, it still feels solid. It's got a really good build to it. It looks pretty cool. It almost looks kind of like a Leica. I think Leicas look good, but I never buy one. But the size and the style, pretty cool. So that concludes my review of the Canon QL17 G3. You can find them online for like between $50 and $150 from what I found. I got mine for right around 50 or 60 bucks from KEH. And that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, like it, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's at Josh the Collins. I also have a podcast, which is on all podcasting platforms called Josh the Collins Podcast. That's on Apple, Google, Spotify, pretty much every podcast platform you can find. And I just talk to people about random stuff. That could be photography, food, art, design, a lot of different things on there. So keep an eye out for that and uh, see you next time. I gotta find my cap really quick. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust this is my friend or my fault. I'm a f ex bro, yeah, she give me that clip as well. I remember back when I was younger, I was happy. Nowadays feel like no one understands.